Every story begins at the end of another. a shaman perform his duties when he is the one in need of healing, of guiding. Baba, help me, Baba. I need you, Baba. Kalunga, God of Death, hear my plea. Kalunga, God of Death, come to me.
Kalunga, god of death, guardian of the veil between the realm of the living and the dead. My name is Zhao, shaman of Amandla. And why, Zhao, shaman of Amandla, have you called me to the realm of the living? It is told that there are three great spirits who have denied you. And if a shaman can cross your veil, having shepherded these spirits with death in tow, Great favor by death, true wealth bestowed. I know the tale. And tell me, Kijana, what wealth is it that you seek? My Baba. A sickness plagued him. You have taken his soul, and I am here to reclaim it back. I seek my Baba's return in exchange for these spirits. But those who fail... Kalunga's grace shall know. I know what is at stake. But do you truly? All I see before me is a boy. A desperate boy with a desperate plea. I am a shaman. My father's son, wielding his masks, knowing his ways. I can do this, Kalunga. I know I can. Hmm. Words carry little weight against the strength of action, but you have spirit. This much is true. We go east. Perhaps there you may prove to me you are worthy of such a task. I will show you my worthiness. Show you the grace of the moon. at these statues with anguish, Nganga. What ails you? When I was young, my Baba would bring me here, to Patakatifu. We would admire these statues with fear, awe. My Baba would tell me the tales, great tales, wondrous tales of the great spirits of this land. And every time we passed through these crossroads, I would look at them and wonder if I would ever be so lucky to be graced with their presence. Now you look at them and are reminded of the reality and challenge that befalls you. This daunting task of facing the great spirits. No. I am reminded of my Baba.
powerful mask. I use the mask to channel my power. It is the mask of the moon. Baba taught me the ways. Graceful is the flow, a harmony soaked in virtuous intent. We should keep moving. Your proficiency intrigues me, but yet it does not make you immortal, Kijana. You are injured. You must heal. I am fine. A gazelle that limps will struggle to outrun the lion. <laughs> Maybe you are right. Fine. I will heal. Spirits, but never so unsettled. You now walk with the presence of death by your side, and these spirits linger here, not ready to let go. You do them a service by performing your duties and giving them peace, Nganga. No matter, there must be a key nearby. I will show you the strength of the sun. showed me that to wield it is to harness a most ferocious love, the fiery flames of noble intentions. Mm. Your Baba taught you well. Not just a boy now, eh? Only time will tell. The sun, the moon, I must embrace the dance. resides in everyone and everything. Through your resonance as a shaman, it can accentuate your inner power. When the time is right, use this energy. Adapt it to your will. Through Ulaji Zhao, you can become stronger and faster than ever.
the key. Uh, I cannot reach it. Shaman, fury and grace. The mask of the sun and the moon. Baba would say the sun and moon never oppose one another. They labor for the same purpose. Never hold one over the other. It is a balance. Kamauhai Makifo. of fear only inspiration it is coming I want to go closer but I'm not sure approach it now awaken its energy the boy stood before a being he was familiar with yet a stranger to stood before a being he was familiar with, yet a stranger to. Staring to him, he felt the heat of a manifested form, something tangible, something real. Yet the eyes told Zhao a different tale, a distance in the pupils, a coldness that clung. Meeting death is never an easy thing. The lives of this world danced to his melody, slept to his lullaby, lamented to his dirge. At least, that is what they say. Yet Zhao stood and greeted him in a world of perfect silence. No grandeur or ceremony. Just death, a boy, and a haunting request. to the gate.
Zhao, I have seen enough. I will journey with you, shaman. This is the road to Ikakaramba, home to the great spirit of the sky. That is our first destination. The sooner I bring you the great spirit, the sooner you return my Baba to me, yes? This will not be easy, shaman. Those before you have tried and failed. Then I will not. Come, we're making little progress standing around. Get to Ikakaramba, get to the great spirit. that hold dominion over the skies. She is the mother that gives the warm embrace when the endless sea above is a coursing blue. Even in the cloudiest of days, she waits behind the veil to reassure. He is the father, there in the darkness. Though the shadows lay heavy, the light brings reprieve, ushers forth the path to a sweet lilting clarity. The warmth and the light, bound together in a harmony fueled by the balance. The collective parent, protecting, guiding. Zhao held the masks of the sun and the moon to the highest adoration for as long as the dominion was close, the embrace would never leave him. cannot wait. Hey, move please. Huh? I said move. Ah! So, wait. Another obstruction! The gates, the spirits, the girl, now this stupid bridge! Hmm, I was not expecting that. What? A shaman to be bested by a bridge. It did not best me! It did. You are careless. Since we began, you have been so focused on reclaiming what you feel is yours that you disregard yourself, others, the very journey itself. What? That is not true. I am doing this for my Baba. Recklessly charging with abandon, scaring a little girl, endangering her life and yours? You do this for your Baba? You wish to walk this path? Do it with respect. 
girl up by the bridge. She was calling to something in the sky. She may know of the great spirit we are seeking. Perhaps. But first, you must find a way to the surface. same symbol. It must be a way of the shaman, a challenge of some sort. Not every challenge needs a challenger. Let us continue our journey. We have much to do. No, no, you do not understand. Beyond there is a power. I can feel it, one that only we can use. All I have to do is get through it, prove my worthiness as a shaman. Hmm. The choice as always is yours. If you believe you can, then you must, but be cautious. Shaman's trinket. See how delicate it is. Powerful, too. Yes, you are lucky, Zhao. This power in the wrong hands would be disastrous. Today, it has found a hopeful host. You are a shaman of Kinzera. Use this power how the others would have wanted for good, for greatness. weeks of the sickness, Zhao had never left his Baba's side. Yet, beyond their door, a different story unfolded. He would hear the cautioned orders of the warriors ferrying the people onto the long roads away. He remembered now the cries of children as they left their homes, and the louder sobs of the elders that knew they may never see their lands again. Those that did not flee succumbed to the growing darkness of the world. One, then another than another, falling by a cruel grip of survival that none could sustain, that none could strengthen. It was the slow fall of time that brought the sickness to his home, to his Baba. The safety of the door mattered little now. The pain and the hearth became as one. I 
think that Abrid would best me. Yes, I did. <laughs> was how much faith you have in me? Yes, it does. seek to offend or harm. Truly, they are good people. Their only wish is to care. They rejuvenate and welcome others. They help. Come, take a moment. A traveler must rest to know the ground has shifted. his legend. Long ago, the villages surrounding Ikakaramba were at the mercy of raging floods. It was Bamba, a young shaman, who would quell the water's rage. Bamba took a small stone, imbued it with the power of the moon, and threw the stone from the highland's peak when the waters were at their angriest. 
The force of his throw was so great, so fast, that it solidified the waters. It allowed the people to leave safely and migrate away from danger. Now, this shaman shrine means to imbue you with your predecessor's power, Bamba Stone. <laughs> what is funny? Uh, sorry, uh, Bamba Stone? <laughs> is that really the name? These are the stories of your ancestors. He gave of himself, and the people here reveled in his sacrifices. I mean, for throwing a stone. <laughs> he got a shrine for that. His experiences are embedded in the masks you carry. Use these teachings well. shamans get shines. No. The actions of the Nganga dictate who does and who does not. echoed in Zhao's ears as he ventured through these ancient caverns. The elated laugh of a child as she splashed her mother. The sloshing of pots filled with the clean, tranquil water brought to a family to cook together, to be together. The waters around the boy fell and cascaded onto themselves with a will of their own. In a way, it was a reminder to Zhao to take comfort in the simple wonders of our world to behold the humble incarnations of nature. He welcomed this reminder again and again, each step a longing dream of the distant tranquility.
will have a shrine, as will I. When I bring him back, they will tell our tale, our Hedithi. I will show you. Focus on the now, Zhao. I am focusing. I know what to do. Return to the surface and seek out this Ikakaramanga. Surprising to see an Ikakaramban. When the storms became violent, most had fled. Or was. What is the girl doing out here all alone? Who is she calling to? All questions for the girl to answer. Until then, you should be considering your apology to her. You frightened her, Sao. You owe her one at the very least. Mm. The Basenji's sorry lick is mightier than its proud bite. Okay, I get it. Zhao knew them to be real. 
From where they came, his baba had said they bored plenty on the hot ever summer nights. The music was fierce as it echoed through their lands, the singing loud and dripped in merriment. These yambos, these good people, they danced, turning and swaying with their shadows in the warm light of the fire. Until now, only the tall trees of their realm saw such joy. Now the hero saw them too, as warm as the kindest embrace, as happy as the softest lullaby. Naive, perhaps, but they mean well. <laughs> I do like them. And I have some creatures out here that are not trying to maim me. that you do not yet possess.
Kratos spirits. When Baba went fishing, he would say if you did not feed them some of your catch, <laughs> it meant trouble. Boat breakers. Boat breakers? Boat breakers. very much. I do. But tell me of your mama. Who was she? We should stay focused. Keep looking for the Ikakarambangal. This was it. Spirit should never linger in our world. The clear line now blurred as the boundaries broke. The ancient laws of the universe altering under the machinations of pain, regret, and restless purpose. They were consumed by confusion, of a hardship words could not quantify. Phantasmal entities now plagued the once peaceful lands Zhao called home. The raw emotions were all around him, his resolve shaken. This was his duty, his purpose to heal those wandering souls so malformed by their own devastation. It was not a cruel act. Baba had always been so clear on that. It was a passage, the shaman but a guide of the fallen. It had not occurred to Zhao how similar he and Kalunga were in that regard. Both had a duty. Both had a burden. You ran fast, eh? <laughs> Listen, I wish to apologize. I should... Hey! No, wait! Uh, wait! Why is she running? Why did you say she had little legs? Spirit. Remember, Zhao, a clever fennec can catch two hairs. What? The girl is bringing us closer to Ikakaramba. Right. Do you come up with these things yourself? I am sorry. Oh, no. 
are sweating. You are more than welcome to take over. Locked in the sky, suspended in the air, their piercing gaze fixed upon the prize. Wide were the hands of Baba to show the quality of the catch, bigger and bigger still with each telling of the tale. A catch of great fortune, but the Kongomato must be paid. Baba was so clear on that, for to not gift the Kongomato was to suffer the rough, to suffer the long swim back to the shore, or worse still. The waters are their domain. That is what he would proclaim, as the young boy sat and absorbed the majesty of his father, the great feeder of beasts. from far away. What? I was trying to do one of your sayings. I do not understand. Fine. Fine.
now. This is not funny. I... Ah, God! Hmm. Jesus. Great baobab tree of Kinzera. Shamans would often rest in the hollow, meditating, considering life, death, and all between. You are a shaman now, Zhao. Perhaps such an act would yield a benefit to take a moment of respite, of reflection. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. it was good. When you are older, you will remember this, you know, or when I am gone, you will remember how annoying you are at these moments. And you will feel sorry for me, and you will laugh. <laughs> it was right.
clever fennec can catch two hairs. The lift to Ikakaramba. Do you sense that? Yes. The lift is incensed with spiritual energy. Those who are fleeing must have been trapped. Hmm. Make your preparations, shaman. This will not be easy. Be ready, Zhao. Did they deny you? They all have their reasons. So they said no to you and you just left them. Denial is a path that winds without end. Yet the path to its destination, it cannot bend. I do not understand. In time, you will. safe now, so no need to be scared of it anymore. Or me. You? 
Who is scared of you? Oh, because I ran. <laughs> I thought we were playing a game. A game? We leapt over pits of spikes, sweated over stone blocks, encountered boat breakers for a game? Uh, <laughs> well, I am Zhao, shaman of Amanla, and I wish to apologize to you for running recklessly over the bridge. I was careless. Oh, thank you. Mm, thinking of it, that was a bit scary. My name is Liana. Liana? I seek the great spirit of the sky. You mean in Pundalu? Yes. Do you know her? Yes. We would always play and laugh together. But then things started changing. A storm grew and grew. And in Pundalu was not the same anymore. No laughing. No playing. She went to the skies. The storms never stopped. Then everyone was gone. I stayed for Impundalu to make sure she was okay. But when I call her, she does not answer. That was who you were calling to on the bridge. Yes, I call and call and call and never an answer. She only stays within the skies. If we can just play again, me and her, then it will be okay. Liana, we need to stop these storms. For us to do so, we must get closer to the skies. Do you know how we can do that? Closer? I, I do, but the storms are... Now that is scary. The only way to reach the skies is through the waterworks, the highest point of Ikakaramba. But it has been locked since the village was abandoned. And the keys are deep within the mines, so I do not know. Eliana, hey, I know you are brave. I can see it. How about we go together, fast to the mines? Really? You will really help us now? I will do my best. Yes! Thank you! Uh, maybe then Impundalu can play with me again. Thank you! I will see you by the entrance to the mines. Yes! Zao, Impundulu must be passed to the realm of the dead. Then you should have taken her when you had the chance. Excuse me? Never mind. Is there something on your mind, Zao? Leona is waiting for us. Yet determined. It was said that to bring the rain was to bring forth the fertility of the gods themselves. A dance of valued fortune, here possessed in the heart of this small girl. Liana, as the name was given, the blessings of the water imbued in the very content of her character. Delicate yet determined she seemed, like the wading rivers that bestow the green and the bounty to us all. Zhao saw within her a reflection of his younger days, of the adventurous soul that would spend an eternity embracing the quality of this world. He knew it in his heart. To help her was to help the world incarnate. For without the soul of the youth, this world would surely mean nothing.
to you, the great mines of Ikakaramba, where the water runs ever free. Oh, well, it used to. Then let us make it run free again. <laughs> where are the keys, Liana? There are two. I was playing with my friend Tabia, and we hit the keys all the way down at the bottom of the mine. Why did you do that? Tabia thought it would be funny. Mzejabari, the mine keeper, was always playing jokes. So, we wanted to get him back. <laughs> what did he think? I'm sure he found it funny. The storm had hit the village. So... Sorry, Liana. There is a lift further into the mine. Take that, and it will bring you down to where the keys are. Wait here then. I will not be long. said you should have taken him Bundulu when you had the chance. So much has happened, and I wonder whether things could have been prevented. Rare is it to change what has happened, but we can always choose how we move forward from it. The actions we are taking now will restore balance. That is what we must do, and we do so together.
fast key. One more to go. One key remaining. It must be on the other side of the mine. Niana really thinks that playing with Mpundulu is going to solve this. Denial can cloud one's perception. Hmm.
Listen, let us return to the top. She will understand what needs to be done. Mpundulu must be at peace. Nihana does not understand this. How can she? She is a child. Do you say this to convince her? Or yourself? Both the keys, Liana. Wait here for a bit. I will work out what to do.
Aditya Akida. Fascinating. Akida was no shaman. Her greatest feat was that of a loving sister. Armed with a spear imbued with the very essence of a star, her younger brother, who was a shaman, was struggling to defeat the dreaded swamp serpent, the Ninkinanka. She could not witness the demise of her brother, and so Akida seized the spear and launched it at the serpent. But the spear's power was only for the trained and proficient. Her actions saved her brother, but at a grave cost to herself. Alas, all know of Akida's spear, a reminder of the sacrifice elders must make for the young. Come, let us put it to good use. Harness the energies out. Launch Akita's spear. Solemn since the great lift to Ikakaramba. It is a lot. The village, the storms, Liana. I know what needs to be done. It must be done for Baba. But it does not make it easy. Your duties as a shaman will never be easy. That is your path, your sacrifice. said that the beauty of this world is shown only by the care of those that defend it. To heal is not an action, but the persistence of the soul. Perpetual is the responsibility. Eternal is the battle of betterment. The lessons were true, but the path provided the practical experience. Liana stood on this path, and Zhao had a choice. Should a shaman walk around those that obscure the end in sight, or stop and find a way together. Zhao had to stop. He thought. He assumed. He knew that was his path.
legend. Like a legend? Yes, not quite a legend. Like a legend. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me a moment. Let this somewhat legend figure out what to do next.
night before Baba passed. It was a quiet night. Quiet as always, but more than usual. For some reason, he felt good that night. I was sitting there, lost in thought, when suddenly I hear the clank of a mangala board. I think Baba could read my mind. Or maybe he knew it was his final. But there we were. We stayed up playing Mankala. Thank God. Baba was good at it. He always won. He told me stories. About me as a boy. About him when he was my age. About anything. We laughed together. We laughed so much. Some shamans say laughter is the best medicine. The next day was not easy. And it is only now I see what we gave each other the night before. And what is that? Normality. responsibilities as the mother. Her tragedy is holding on. Not letting go is the cause of all this pain. This is your task, Zhao. You must help Impundulu and Liana accept the natural cycle of life. To embrace change. understand that Impundulu holds on because she fears you taking on the responsibilities of disguise. The only way I can help her and you is to do my duty as a shaman, to allow her to pass on. Let us just go and play some more, eh? Maybe if we keep playing, Impundulu will see how much fun we are having and will join in. I'm sorry, Liana. I cannot do that. It... No! No! It... It is not fair! I... I... I do not like this! Liana! She will understand in time. 
Let us get this over with.
God knows that one day they must step aside for their child. It can be hard to grasp. Becoming a parent can feel like the death of the self. But there is a liberation in acceptance. A feeling of rebirth. Soon, Liana will prosper. She will give love to this world. But first, she must find herself. Find her peace. We go west. To the woodlands now, yes? Hmm. The great spirit of nature resides there. Right. Let us go then. To the woodlands. The rain has arrived. I can feel the pressure these guys easing. Yes. The great rain brings many blessings for humans and gods alike.
a statue. It weeps. Liana, I made her like me. These are tears of joy, Zhao. Of release, not of sorrow. You did what was needed, what many could not. Hmm. Responsibility comes to us when we want it least, but need it most. Did you know Mpundulu well before this? Yes. She was a true guardian of the skies. Calm like the passing wind, giving like the bountiful rain. But every sky has its clouds. Mpundulu was no different. Love and care cannot exist without passion, fury. I think I understand that. My Baba, he would often flip between soft and stern. It gave me a headache. That is the way of the provider. Liana now must find that balance. The skies will demand it from her. When we want it least but need it most, right? Now you are learning. The path to Kivuli, the dense woodlands of Kenzera. It is here that the great spirit of nature dances. I've been here before, though there is something off about it. The air is thick with sickness. As though the balance of the forest has been disrupted. And they must surely be connected. Find the great spirit so we may heal this malady. to this when we are better prepared.
These are no ordinary snakes. Namibs. Baba would say that Namibs were the creation of a great world devouring beast. Your Baba had the Griot's gift. For better and for worse. Water sought to drown the homes of living souls. Their rooms abandoned, their purpose nullified. There would be no more singing in the night. What good were hearts when there was no one to use them? And Baba would often say that all things had meaning, but what was the meaning here? Zhao thought about what Kolunga might say if such a thing were asked of him. Perhaps he would make some grand statement on the power of nature, on reclamation that the homes were never the Kivulians to own in the first place. But Zhao did not ask. The drowning of civilization was enough of a statement in itself. failed to worry the boy. Often, Zhao would dream of such a fate only to wake in the embrace of his Baba. The Griot's history told of a fear, a great maker of the Namib, a serpent that coveted the taste of wilds. Inkanyamba was its name, nor many dreaded to utter it, for to say it was to draw the lidless eyes to them. Never look to it, the elders breathed, yet here its children lacked their stomachs full of poison that scarred the skin and pierced the flesh. Perhaps it was their innate desire to continue their creator's work, to consume Zhao's world in the coil of malice and decay.
another obstruction to hinder the afflicted. Humans do enjoy locking off their land. Strange. Half of the bridge is broken. We will get to Kivuli once we lower this bridge. Let us begin. That is a Kivulian distress signal. You are certain? Most certain. We should follow the sound. I did not hear a horn. Regardless, it is dangerous to seek the sound of strangers. We found Liana, and that worked out well for us. If anyone is still here, we should do our best to help them. Hmm. The path to its shocker is blocked. Let us focus our attention on Kivuli for now. them so vividly. Baba and I would play hide and seek. I would dodge and weave through the trees, always watching his movements. 
He would beat his arms like an owl, making these silly hooting sounds as he came looking for me. And he always caught me. Always. <laughs> what am I doing? Now's not the time for memories. Focus. Sometimes the whys and hows matter little in a world that refuses to stop spinning. Zhao could sit there and ponder for an eternity how this world had changed and why this all had to happen. Such theories and speculations played little on Zhao's mind. All he saw around him was his world different, altered, contorted to the point of little recognition. Was this still his Kinsera? If he were to succeed in this journey, what would he be bringing his Baba back to? Nostalgia was soiled by the painful present. Looking back is easy. Looking forward is not.
send distress horn. We must be getting closer. Past the gate. So I do not hear this horn. Are you sure? Past this gate. We need to open this gate. himself. Chaos and order, essential partners in the great dance to which Zhao was taught. The untrained warrior fought with but one in mind, his Baba had uttered. To be true to the form of fighting, Zhao had to let go, shedding the dependencies of structure but remaining meticulous. A sweeping foot, a calculated arm, freeing eyes to see beyond the moment. The boy lost himself as he weaved and flowed, dancing with the power of ancestors in his heart, connecting with them, journeying deeper with them. The form was an act of enemy and ally, contest and partnership. That was the way of the shaman, that was the way of the dance. Second key.
stench of decay strengthens the deeper we go. It even permeates my form. The spirits here must be suffering deeply. What happened here?
part where you say, good job. Are you a dog performing tricks? Is it every obstacle that I will be shouting your praises? It's not like I'm asking for a statue. Let us keep moving. Again? Yes. I heard it this time. quiet. Strange to be able to hear my thoughts clearly, you know. Silence can often pierce even the thickest fog of the mind. I do not often like silence. When Baba first became ill, our home was anything but silent. People from all over Amandla came to visit. So many people. 
every hour of the day, laughing and crying and praying. I knew in those moments, all I wanted was for them to live. I feel terrible saying it, but I just wanted to be with my Baba alone. Then they left and they never came back. What a fool I was, chasing that silence and praying for the silence to live.
must be getting close to the source of this distress signal. Faced as ever. Wait, those are your babas, Mas. What a. Oh, Zhao, so I am sorry. It is fine. I am fine. I am dealing with it. It is all we can do in a broken world. We are shamans, healers in a land long past healing. It seems the gods have a cruel humor. You are shivering. Oh, 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 I'm fine. Just a little cold. Just, just cold. She does not look long for this world. This land, as you have seen, is decaying. The great spirit of nature is lost, and without them, the woods have become toxic. It is why I am here. To restore balance. How are your efforts, Sabulana? Let me help you. Oh, Zhao. In truth, I did not expect anything when I blew the horn. But you being here is truly a blessing from... <coughs> Her spirit. Zhao, it may be time to perform your duties. Help ease her pain. Sabulana. Please, save your energy. We can talk more soon. First, tell me how I can help you. I was collecting the ingredients for a tonic, but my condition worsened and I could not complete it. Three ingredients remain. <coughs> but Zhao, I must warn you, getting them is not easy. This forest continues to degenerate, and the ancestral spirits here grow volatile. Hey, you underestimate me. Maybe seem total dog assassin. Ah, ah, so stop! Do not make me laugh. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Look, tell me what the ingredients are and where to find them. What we require is in the treetops of the forest, in and around the village of Kivuli. The kifo flower found in all its elegance in the center of Kivuli. Furaha berries lacking in the gleaming heaven. And the Irongo leaf nestled in the fluttering boughs. Whatever it takes, Sal, truly, stay safe out there. The forest, it plays these tricks on the mind. These lands, they are so unstable. Baba would do that. Falsely act as if he was feeling better. I guess he was trying to protect me. It felt hollow. So.
Zhao, wait. Her spirit is fading rapidly. She does not have long. Your time is better spent by her side and searching for these ingredients. Are you suggesting I do nothing? Sit and watch my friend pass? No, that is not... With respect, Kalunga, one thing I know about the human spirit is that if there is a chance, even a shred of hope, of potentially making things better, we take it. I will find these ingredients. I will save her. So please, let me do this. Then we will go back to, again, fixing the disorder you conjured by leaving a great spirit behind. Disorder I... You are speaking from your heart, boy, not your mind. Enough, Kalunga. Please, we need to find these ingredients. is further up than this, right at the top of the trees. Its denial is what caused disorder. I could not claim them if they refused me. Countless people refuse you, yet they are still taken by you. That is different. Oh, sure. One rule for them, another for us. is like finding salt in a field of... Stop. Please.
Grace is amazed, so the time spent finding these ingredients. Stop disturbing me. We are on the outskirts of Kivuli. The history of the forest is ingrained within these homes. Yes, but let us just focus. Keep your eyes open for the ingredients. of these woods could not find these ingredients. You make an art of provoking me.
it was said in Kivuli. It was said in Kivuli that the shadows spared those lonely souls from solitude. To look into the shadow of the self is to bear witness to a partner of tomorrow. A grace from the night world that waits for the time to take us all to the realm of the dead. Kalunga would refute such folklore, of course, but Zhao took comfort in the idea. If the shadows sought to guide us to our end, then perhaps his Baba was not alone. The shadow knew Baba well. Even as one night, the boy heard the muttering of a desperate prayer when all who should listen would be beholden to the slumber of man. I do not recognize my own shadow anymore. Must be more elsewhere. Enough of this, Sal. We must return. So, look out! a habit of being led by your emotions, acting erratically instead of rationally. Even just now, you could have gotten yourself killed, obsessing over a flower instead of being aware of the dangers around you. You keep disturbing me. Every time I'm trying to focus, I cannot think. You keep talking about how this is foolish, a waste of time. I am trying to make you see sense, so. You are wasting your time trying to stop the inevitable. The inevitable? That is your problem. You only see the end. Death for all. The inevitable. You have no care for us. We are just inconveniences to you. Idlers who perform in this meaningless cycle of creating false hopes, dreams, in order to justify our lives. But it is you. You who are an inconvenience. The one God that everybody fears. The one that everybody hates. The idler God who takes and takes and takes. You wait to claim my friends, my family, my Baba. You feel nothing. Not for anyone. Not for Liliana, not for Sabulana, not for me. So. No. I'm going to perform my duty, a shaman, and I will heal Sabulana. You see this flower? It was planted, so it must grow naturally elsewhere in these treetops. I will find the key for flower. I will find the other ingredients, and then I will deliver your spirits and you will deliver my Baba. Then we are done. If that... Do what you must. So 
Sabulana's home. She was trying to concoct the remedy. Her research is all here in the scrollings. The Owungo leaf, nestled in the fluttering boughs. Furaha berries, lurking in the gleaming haven. The Kifo flower, found in all its elegance in the center of Kivoli. Oh, naturally growing in the grove of effigies. Bless you, Sabulana. A shaman of Kivoli, you truly are. I will find them, Sabolana. I promise you. Hadithia Zawadi. Zawadi's hook. A shaman. It does not matter. This will help me find the ingredients.
This is where I will find the Kiko flower. for flower. More ingredients to find. I'm not done yet. You see, when you're not disturbing me, I can handle myself just fine. about what happened. It is not good to let hostile words linger in the air. Let them linger. Very well. to say old remedies are, in some way, a path to happiness. Wise words. Let us keep moving.
watering wells. I could find the Owongo leaf here. nature, but I know it is not native to these lands. Hmm. Not long now, Sabolana. have been persistent, so This has been the third time they have intervened. Their behavior has not been volatile, but calculated. There must be a reason they perceive you as a threat. I walk with death by my side. You will always be perceived as a threat. mark of greatness, but upon a different kind of challenge. A trial for a warrior, a true test of the dance. This will not be easy.
Sabolana. Here, the ingredients you asked for. You did it. So, I... Stop, please. Uh, you should make the remedy. You know that I cannot do it as good as you. <laughs> do not make me laugh. It hurts. You are a good soul, Zhao. You have always been a good soul. Eh, make the remedy. We will get you back on your feet. Then, I might have to ask a favor of you. What kind of favor, old friend? You say the Great Spirit is lost. I intend to find them, heal them, in exchange for my Baba's soul. He was wrongfully taken by the God of Death. The God of Death? Yes, I travel with him now. The tail, the three great spirits. Yes, Sabulana. So far, I have guided Impundulu, the great spirit of the sky. I intend to do the same with the great spirit that resides here. Can you help me? First, let us make this tonic. I will instruct you on what to do. Yes, of course. Take the ongo leaf. Place it in the palm of your hand. Right. And then? The berries. Place them within the leaf. Fold the leaf over them. Okay. Am I doing it right? <laughs> Perfectly. Now, grip the flower and take a deep breath in. Can you? Yes. The smell of defeat. Of disappointment. The stench of your father's last thoughts as you failed to save him. So, step away from her. What kind of shaman fails his father, his friends? You are nothing but a worthless boy. A failure. Why are you saying all this? Stop! Stop it! <sighs> Pungent, delectable fear. All the better for consumption. And I will, child. I will consume you.
pieces. I have to get out of here.
Ethiopia. Do not run from it. sensed its presence. The spirit became so malformed, it used a poisoned tongue to manipulate you, to prey on your fear. I see. Why am I so bad at this? The choices I make, they are always wrong. When Baba was here, it was safe. There was no pain. No tricks, no lies. It was safe. The world is hurting me. It is hurting me. It hurts so much. It can feel that way sometimes. That the world is unfair. Set against you in every way possible. But the world is capable of giving more than it takes. And I know you see it. Because I have learned that from you. You are where you are now because of the choices you made. From what the world has given you. I see before me a strong, brave and intelligent young man who chooses to champion hope over despair. I see that. And I 
must see you for who you are, Zhao. I must. Two spirits. Where do we go now? We must proceed to the old junction by the forest bridge. The path to the Deadlands and the village of Ichoka begins there. It is in those harsh lands we will find the last great spirit. Then let us go. Kalunga. Yes, Zhao. Thank you. The heart of fear is within, and it is bound to nature's reach, not a form, not a being. We all possess our kikiyaon, and in time it possesses us. The once rich veins that course and travel, the slow drip, the burn within. You feel yourself fade more and more, nature's hold, nature's watch like grim eyes nestled in a tree of familiarity. The water drifts round and round the void, the last of the crown washing away as the knees buckle and the rising pain begins again. It cannot still be the true fear of it all. The fear is letting go, of staring into the eyes of that which you created and knowing. I cannot run from it. I cannot hide. I have to be honest with myself, with you. need, great eyes that saw only the trapped prints of the boy. The scent caught them, clutching at their throats, pouring into their bellies, writhing within. They saw it so clearly. The boy, this shaman, took unsightly steps, gripped to the regret of a forlorn guilt that cast aside their warnings, even as they held their arms to him. Zhao followed a shadow, dark footsteps that would bring doom and misery. The hunters cried in their bubbled tongues. The boy could not be allowed to succeed. He could not take them to her. He could not go to the barrow.
Up there, Zhao. The path to the Deadlands and the village of Ishoka. of Tawa's heart. Yes, I obtained it in the nightmare. Without it, I would have perished. Mm. It is a great and mysterious gift. Tawa was a peculiar shaman. A believer of breaking and reforming as a means of healing. To rebuild, to unravel. The belief that by having total understanding of the elements around you, you would have total understanding of the self. I know you will use this power responsibly, Zhao. The old woodlands bleed into the Deadlands. It is home to the mighty Chokans and the great spirit of mankind. This is the final great spirit, Zhao. And then you will return my Baba. I will return your Baba. Mount Ichoka. I hear it is named from the tribe. Or, oh, well, maybe the tribe is named after the mountain? Hmm. Many tell tales of the mountain. It was once mighty. Its fire so hot that it could turn the deserts to glass. Then the mountain fell drowsy. Dormant. So much power takes a heavy toll. It seems like the mountain is finally waking up then. It has to be the Great Spirit. Gods, look at the heat coming off of those springs and geysers. A consequence of the mountain. Be careful. This is not for swimming.
what was endurance through strife that was the shocking way the war of the mind fought to keep hold of a land that could not be tamed alas these wild lands were home sand carried in the pouches of young and shockans to remind them to retain the contest of personal nature home lacked clear definition now for the boy what was the home without the father without the mother was thou ever the son clutched tightly to his mama's breast endurance through strife thou could not help but linger on the words in his restlessness as his thoughts lay like heavy darkness the parent became both clear and distant near and far kin and stranger like death asked about my mother do you remember i do i do not talk about her to people i do not know well but now i cannot help but think of her she is a chokan a true warrior of the desert she left when i was still small she died in battle No, not battle. She left. I see.
keep our eyes open for a way around. My eyes are always open, though. No, that is not what I... Oh. Ah, okay. <laughs> you got me. Shotguns would travel down from the mountain to bathe and heal, to soothe their bones and cleanse their minds. I could use that right now. I do not think I have ever been this tired in my life.
still very far. See all the lands in such a short time. Is it to your liking? Mm, not exactly. But that does not make it any less thrilling. Kenzera has changed so much. But it is still Kenzera. on our approach. another path, Kalunga. None that are better than the beaten path. It is through here, or days in the middle of the desert trying to find our way. <sighs> the bridge. The bridge is the better option.
like oil lacking on the surface of a pool. In the heat of these deadlands, Zhao's mind shifted to Sabolana's warmth. The way it felt to make her laugh. That look she would give before they were to embark on deep treks into the forest against their parents' better wishes. The touch of her hand upon his. A kindling of romance yet to bloom. Her smile. A smile. Our memories can change. Zhao would never hard see it. Wretched, unnatural, pierced from ear to ear. A healer he may well have been, but some things cannot just be healed. Some wounds never fade. Arduous. footstep. 
With each passing footstep, Zhao felt it. A fear ingrained in the root and the rot of this abandoned land. The fear rustled every bush and brushed against every leaf. In that haunting melody, one thought clinged to the boy. A thought unable to be so easily shrugged off by the journey's pursuits. Did my Baba fear those final moments? When inevitability smote at the senses, choked the fading fragments of hope or light? Was it fear in his eyes when he saw that last breath drawn? The boy could not say. What he imagined of finality was just that. An image. A fear of leaving this world, or a fear of leaving those behind. Both hold a terror that none should have to bear.
the tribes folk came, they saw before them a land few would wish to claim. Yet the journey was long, and a hope persisted. A hope bloomed by the sight of the world beneath. Water, the jewel of life. One hand became many, and the people were born. The waters raised by the innovation of mortal minds, great wheels that drew awe and wonder. Green came to the hills, flowers to the cliffs, a land given life and a name, Ikakaramba, the pride of generations past. The tragedy was this. Now only one remained to tell the tale of her people. What a burden it is to bear the history of everything.
iron rod plunging into the eye, the powder smothered over the flesh, the bones shrinking as the face contorts to an ever menacing grin, a smile that lingers like a light flashing into the pupa. Tokoloshi. Tricksters in life, now tricksters in death. A cruel joke by the witch doctors of the wild that all but lost its punchline. Spite became them in the darkening days of the land, as the sleeping tribe of Ikakaramba were taken in the grim blackness of the storm. One would wake to find the others would not, and they knew. They all knew. The Tokoloshi had come, now plagued by the final pun, that death has no rhyme or no reason. A mottled laugh in a choking heart. all but silent in the waking days of his barber's passing. Only one remained, an elder on her fading breath, too stubborn to abandon her stool. Her last witnessing was the broken boy, kneeling in the plains as tears scarred his cheeks. The mutterings of desperation as he clutched the masks as he cast the world for the pain. Patakatifu, the elder cried. Sanctuary. Look into the wise eyes of Kalunga to find your peace. In Patakatifu, where the spirits lay in dormant dreams and the passing tunnel of undeath falters. Her last breath, a hope. The boy knew of these cheating spirits, great beings defying the will of the tunnel. To Patakatifu he must lay his plan. In the sanctuary of gods and mortal kind, he would seek the one they call death.
thinking a lot about the woodlands. Experience leaves scars. That is how you carry the lesson. No. I was thinking about what I said to you in Kivoli. It was wrong, what I said. I know you care. I think I was afraid. I was afraid of failing another, failing you, failing myself. And I threw it all at you so unfairly, unnecessarily. And yet, you overcame this fear against all odds. And as I said, it is because of your actions, your choices, that the woodlands can begin to find its balance, its peace. Look, the spirit weeps. Tears of growth, of release. sacred, ever sacred, yet ever silent were the great trees that washed the woodlands. Their arms reached high towards the skies, open, inviting. Beneath the soil and dirt their bodies sprawled, burrowing ever closer to the deep center of us all. Even in the throes of these days of darkness, they remained. Long have our ancestors uttered that the forest held a silent counsel for the troubled mind. After all, the forest had seen life, death, and all between them. Perhaps, Zal thought, through their age, they were numb to the shadowy night of the heart. And in that moment, Zal felt a sad pang of envy. Let us go. I'm done here. But you have only just arrived. I do not want to be here. I want to go. Zao. Very well. <sighs> Zao. It is okay to not be okay.
Let us continue. The mountain is still very far. to the great dunes of Kenzera. We are one step closer to the mountain. And many, many more steps to finding the Great Spirit. Maybe this Great Spirit will be kind and pass quickly after all this. We must keep moving. that surrounds its shocker. Be mindful of our path. It is all too easy to become lost in the sea of sands.
duality of the duality of life is this finding happiness deep within the lament as pained as laughing at a wake where the moment once more hits you and the smile fades Zhao would lose himself to the adventure the journey had been arduous and oftentimes brought a brutality that numbed warmth but he had dreamed all his life of venturing this world of doing true good enjoyment flickered within him even in his companionship to death for all his prior faults then the dawning memory scratches across the soul we enjoy these moments but remember now this joy is drawn from the very same pool of our own misfortune the smile faded from Zhao the journey refocused the pain returning once more to say they guide true souls to find fortune. Uh, should we test our luck? I think we have earned it. Yes. to blame her resent her but i do not anymore my mama i mean i think i understand her better now she was born and raised here trained all her life in the ways of a trucker a warrior at heart the wilds were where she was most alive baba was the opposite like the sun and moon <laughs> yes but rather than labor for the same papas i think she stayed with us for as long as she did because of me i know she loved me but she needed more than being a mother and the times when she was with us she was elsewhere she was always elsewhere creatures of this world i enjoy the firefly the most they are heralds of wisdom and knowledge arbiters of light and dark and very useful too they can be the fire in a lantern if you like a touch that is not what i meant
harsh land. Let us not join them, eh? Maybe a route to a trucker through it. If not, a cool respite from this searing sun. Kabili, the power of Kabili's wing, wielded by the thunderous King Kabili, royalty as well as shaman. He sought to bring rain from the skies for the survival of his people. When drought overcame the farms of the Choka, the livestock of this land were gravely affected. King Kabili used this skill to wrestle the clouds for rainwater. He fought proudly, gallantly, and when the clouds relented, the villagers prospered. Baba once told me about a king who wrestled the clouds. It must be this one. Yes, Kabili was revered. 
a shaman who put his people before himself. He soared to great distances, just as you will. Let us test out our new gift. held into itself stories all but forgotten. Only the husks of the adventures remained. The memories of these creatures were lost to the great vessel of time. Krutzlang was their name. To look to them was to see firsthand the forlorn pursuit of nature, struggling to cross a land that had no business in mercy or relent. Only their bones remained to remind the world of what hope could bring. Pain above all else. Zhao, however, saw promise. For though many journeys could end in failure, few brave souls could cross the brink, perseverance through insurmountable odds. Zhao would not allow his story to end as the Grootslang, a name forgotten, a purpose tarnished. His desire was too great to abandon. His promise was too important to be lost. I did, but all the same. We must keep moving and stay vigilant. As they do not relent, they do not forget. And we just stirred the hive.
together through contortion, a hive mind without individuality, without promise or hope. Zhao could not shift the thought of them, of their covetous desires. True understanding did not come to him, and Kalunga seemed not to tell it, that once they were all like us, for all are born with a balanced virtue, yet envy caught them all. The brother who glared at his keen successes, the partner who craved the better life with the richer soul, the thief who could not seize the pillage of the dark. All drew the bloodletting, when in the hot nights the adze trailed through the cracks in the stone like lucid sand. Touched they became. There was no reversing this. The brother, the partner, the thief. No more. Only adze remained. these Adze were relentless. I wish I was, but such is true. We have attracted their attention. They will stop at nothing to attain them.
just need to keep moving, eh? I am not going to end up as the Adze's meal. That is not how Adze operate. You are not a meal to them, Zhao. You are another potential Adze. To devour your mind, regurgitating you into a cocoon so that your body may slowly mutate into their form. We... we just have to keep moving. from the Adze's territory. Perhaps with luck, their grotesque fascination for you will subside. Regardless, we must focus. There may be worse challenges still. that a passerby may have used this same tree to meditate not too long ago. For a moment, I could see Baba, vividly, lighting incense, bathing in the smoke. I would watch him. 
So? That was too much. at the mountain. Now begins our true ascent. should not sneak up on people, young shaman. It is unbecoming of the trade. I... Wait. How did you know I was a shaman? Those masks. They belonged to a great man. Yes, they did. You have traveled far from Amandla. And farther still to go. I am Zhao. Bomani, Ovechoka. We are no threat to one another. We are not, but I see on your face that something troubles you. It is my son, or the absence of him, I should say. I am waiting for his return, yet as I wait, he still does not come. We were evacuating its shocker, but my son hesitated. He could not live with the fact that he had still not undertaken the enduring right. The enduring right? It is a way of Ichoka. Young aspirants sought favor from the gods, and my son was keen. We argued. I told him it was just a ceremony. Surviving is more important now. But sons have a way of defying their fathers. And so he left for the mountain to the right. He wore his mask, spear in hand, ready to prove himself to no one. He promised we would meet at this outpost right here. And so I still wait. I wait and wait. I am headed to the mountain myself to seek out the Great Spirit. If I see your son, Bomani, I will send him to you. Hmm. 
careful steps, shaman. Mercy is a rare bloom that does not grow in a shock and soil. Hmm. I know, Zhao. I know. This is the true work of a shaman. Yes. I hope we can find his son. I pray he is alive and well.
Mrs. Bomani's son's mask? It would seem so. Cracked and damaged. Reflecting. Maybe it could help. Talking. Or sometimes maybe not. I'm so used to just doing. All the time doing. It is not as if you are doing nothing now, Zhao. No. You are right. I am healing. I guess.
Hadithia Shukudu, Zao, you now possess within you Shukudu's might. And what a mighty predecessor he was. Long ago, a great evil amassed in the harsh dunes. It was a creature of unspeakable wickedness and insidious intent. It sought to drain the spirit of the earth, protecting itself in a dome of shimmering black and stone. The great Shukutu refused to allow this horror to pass. He charged with all his might the fury of the gods within him as he broke through the impenetrable dome. He took a mighty step forward, and that made all the difference. A might that helped save this world? I hope I can live up to his valiance. I will wield this in his honor. Yeah, is near identical to Bomani's. I do not doubt this is a clue to his son's location. We draw close to our answer. Why would the son abandon his mask and spear? Let us keep looking. It's Shoka, the great bastion of the north. Where Ikakaramba found power in innovation, where Kivuli in adaptation, Ichoka found it in endurance. The sealed gate to the mountain summit. We must open the gate if we are to find the great spirit. I believe this is the enduring right, a test of the soul's worthiness. It demands a bout, but not just with brawn, and it calls upon the mind, but not just with strategy. And we, Zhao, must find the two great keys to venture forth. Then let us find them. me a long time to let go of my mother. Pain, then anger. But I realized there's no point holding on to the past like that. She yearned for something else. I guess that temptation took over. Baba and I once talked of where she could be. He knew she did not return to a shocker. 
He came here often enough. No. He thought maybe she had gone beyond Kinzera. To see the world? Mm-hmm. To be free to follow her path. A path without Baba and I. I... I do not think Baba ever got over it. I think he loved her more than anything. I doubt more than he loved you. Let us go. There is much more to cross. and determination shine bright. To fight without thought is foolish. A bird in the sky is beholden to the wind under its wing.
see that? It must be the first key for the gate. sublime, but there's grace denied when their time did align. The moon cycled past, an illness crept in, once three great spirits, now sickly and thin. Oh, wise revered shamans, come, heal our pain, shepherd our spirits to Kalunga's domain. Many did come, the shaman's path brave, and death washed them all, intrigued, mind, grave. Their attempts were in vain, their spirits forlorn. With no respite, no cure, and hope all but gone. It is said, if a shaman can cross the thick veil, guiding those spirits with death by their sail, great favor by death, true wealth bestowed. But those who fail, Kalunga's grace shall know. Parent to child is an understanding that transcends mortality, that surpasses even the strength of gods. Zhao knew in his heart he had been wronged, that this life without his Baba was not wanted, not deserved. Yet he was not a foolish boy. Wise were his years, and his journey bestowed unto him eyes now opened. There is a pain worse. He saw it right there in the eyes of the warrior. Bomani. The fear of losing the child, of losing his son. Even Kalunga looked upon Bomani differently. The cold, distant eyes of death were there, yes, but deeper. A warm kindling of compassion that uttered a whisper of familiarity. No pain. Sons and daughters of the Chaka would prove their. 
their metal. The power of the fighting spirit is integral to the aspirant.
there lies our second key. Done. That is both keys now in our possession. Now we must return to the gate. It is time to brave the raw power of the mountain. his necklace. <clears throat> Bringing peace to Bomani is a good cause. The son must have buried him, but there is no one here. So where is the son? Therein lies the mystery, one we must resolve in line with our goal. The summit awaits. test of the right is the most arduous. Truly, it teaches all a valuable lesson, one bestowed in succession as well as defeat. And what is that? The true measure of their character.
It is piercing.
something is marked here. The symbol of resilience. A defining trait of mankind, but they are governed by their unwavering power to persist.
wisdom. There is no better teacher than our mistakes. Often said that the road of good intentions is littered with dark obstruction. Such a saying was all too real for Zhao. He endeavored nothing more than to serve his land, to become a paragon of the path. Yet the burden grew heavier and heavier with each passing moment, with each dark sight that befell him. It seemed to the boy clear that all good acts came with a cost. To help the child and her mother brought a mourning not easily shifted. To help his old friend was to dance with fear incarnate. To help a long-gone father would bring both peace and discomfort. The child, the friend, the father, the road reaching its end. How did it all still seem so far away?
journey has been one of none know the story of tomorrow's dawn few can predict what shrouds are unveiled through the piercing light of day not all can tell the journey of the wind zhao was no all-seeing prophet he had no business dwelling in the gamble of time that did not stop him from those stray thoughts this journey had been one of yesterday looking over his shoulder to the world he knew to the life he had of memory and cherishment but here on the highest mountain of the harshest plain he looked ahead what did he see in that rising dawn was it peace for his pain or maybe a gentle embrace tears of sorrow or polluted joy none know the story of tomorrow's dawn but zao was prepared to tell it all the same summit of Mount Ichoka. And the end of the enduring rite. Hmm. The other half of the sun's mask. It must be within the mountain itself. Within the mountain? The great spirit of mankind. I think I know what happened to the sun. This is it, Kalunga. We find Bomani's son and heal these lands. And then... And then our path will come to an end. Yes. Right. Here we go. of mankind. I am Zhao, shaman of Amandla. The boy is brave for Amandla. Many seek to guide Gagorib. Many fail to guide Gagorib. Death even Gagorib has denied. What makes the boy think Gagorib seeks to be guided? I do not seek to guide Gagorib across the veil. I seek to cross a father's child. I seek the child of Bomani. The boy dares to come and speak a poison tongue? 
the boy will suffer. For within the child bears the burden of mankind. Liar! Enough of your lies! And it is the father who wishes to release this burden. No father would wish for such a foolish son, one who sought for long greatness above all else. Clinging to what is no longer there, I offered the boy a way out. Now the boy will perish.
Sir Wango. My dear, dear son. What has happened to you? <sighs> Parents and children, they fight. It is the way of things. But you will find no shame here. You did not cause this to happen to me. Time did. <sighs> Let the pain go, Toto Wango. Let the anger go. Be at peace with me. Be at peace. Baba always jumped around in his writing. He'd start with one, then finish another, always going with whatever ideas came to him. He let me read a few of his finished manuscripts, but only the finished ones. I'd never seen half of this before. I... I'm going to read them. It doesn't matter if they're unfinished. For the time he was writing, he still had something to say. They're still a part of him. Baba's books. So many genres and stories that they have their own room in our house. Mama wanted to donate the older ones, but Baba wouldn't let her. He was always in the middle of reading them, he said. I think I'll read my way through his collection. No time better than the present, right? Baba would think so. Yeah, he really would. Mama's Nakshi. Baba wanted me to pick something special to celebrate. I'm going to be a big brother. I just hope I can live up to the challenge. She won't know Baba. But that doesn't mean I can't introduce her to him through his stories. The world he loves. The people he values. say this is a mess. I should probably tidy it up at some point. I mean, looks fine to me. Oh, the griot lamp. So yet. Why did Baba think I'd want one of these? Fact! The giraffe only sleeps for around 30 minutes a night. That must be our parents' fear. the city of the future. <laughs> I could have just made a volcano, but Baba did me to do better. To really think about my project. I wanted to make something people would want. What they need. A better future. A sustainable, powerful. Maybe one day I can make it a reality. Really. I'd sell my plans to Pomodja Corp and buy Mama a beautiful home in the country. She'd love that. have to change soon. We'll have the little one here and she'll need a room. But for now, it's like a time capsule. A really nostalgic one.
Mama in Baba's bedroom. It feels empty. I wish I could build a time machine and take Mama back to this day. She always said it flew by so quickly. She and Baba didn't even get any of their own cake. Mama's new painting. It's a lot darker than her usual work. Mama always said you create art with your feelings as the palette. And I could see it all right here, her heart on the canvas. But Mama is Mama. Even when she's grieving, her real self can't help but come out. Right there, a glimmer of light. Little Ozzy, Bibi and Gina bought this in the hospital shop the day I was born. I'm surprised it's still in good shape. Bibi called it my guardian spirit. She said in the ancient times, Kriot bats like these would protect the pure of heart. I miss her a lot. But, in a way, I'm glad she was never around to see how things turned out with Baba. That would have broken her. It was scary for me, his child, but... I can't imagine. Baba's own mother.
done, the three great spirits sought and healed, the promise fulfilled. We must return to Patakatifu. We must go to the realm of the dead. Yes. Whenever you are ready, Zhao. This is where we enter the realm of the dead. The pool is the conduit, and these waters will guide us through. We can wait if we must, but when you are ready, tell me so. I am ready to enter the realm of the dead.
made of sorrow, like grains of sand will slip through our hands to journey the lands. Death's fear consumes, a catalyst it becomes, for blooming in its wake as the heart overcomes. As fledglings leave their nests soaring to the sky, a parent knows inevitably they must bid their child goodbye. See it now. I know you do. Tiwaroho, where the path begins and ends. It is peaceful here. That is because your heart beats with peace. It sees no more anger, no more fear, no more sorrow. Your heart beats with your ancestors now. Peace. You see it now. I know you do. <laughs> I ask you now, Zao, Shaman of Amandla, are you truly ready to perform your duties? As my son, Papa, I am. <laughs> then show me. Show me you are ready. 
Oh, my Baba. Baba Yangu. Baba Yangu. Baba Yangu. You truly thought you could summon and barter with death itself. So headstrong. So defiant. Oh, my son. Did I make you proud of me, Baba? Are you proud of me? I have always been proud of you. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. What are you sorry for, my boy? For feeling angry. Scared. Zhao, healing can only begin when we have conceded to our emotions. When we do not hide them. When we do not ignore them. But I could not save you. You could not save me from my fate. But you have saved many others from theirs. The path you have walked has been one of service and compassion. And that is all I could ever wish of you. A lion's heart swells with pride as they watch their cub roar with might. Papa, I love you. I love you too. Now, Zhao, my son, perform your duty.